right, uh, well, let's get started. Uh, I'm Roger Rail, Chair of Guard and Chair of Site Residence for Safe Water. In my 26th year watching over this, clean up. Um, and I'll have an update later. I'm Shana Milkey, Ann Arbor resident and secretary for CARD. <coughs> Kathy Knowles, our township trustee, CARD rep. Rita Cruso, um, uh, CARD member, family CARD member, and faculty member of the University of Michigan. Uh, Vince Cruso, uh, board member of CARD and uh, coordinator member of the Allen Street Watershed Group. Jason Machieski, County Commissioner, Sio, Dexter, Chelsea. Uh, Dan Hamill, Eagle Project Manager for the Gilman Shetty Khan, Public Health Engineer for the Health Department. Mike Moran, Ann Arbor Township Supervisor and Vice Chair of CARD. Max Pettibone, uh, local resident. Jack Eaton, City Council. Kathy Griswold, Ann Arbor City Council and advocate for a super fun site cleanup. Yeah. Russia Alex, I Okay. Um, yeah, um, uh, this is a board vote for the minutes from the last meeting. The only change from the draft is that I had said the readings from Elizabeth Grove were one to two parts per billion, and Roger corrected me that it's one to four parts per billion. Well, the most recent, are you talking about historically or the yes. most recent sampling? Historically. historically. Oh, okay, yes, yes. Okay, <laughs> so that's the only change. Um, so I move that the board approve the minutes from the main meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thanks for doing it. Thanks. <clears throat> okay, Dan, you got some updates? Yeah, a couple. I'm sure we'll have some questions later on news. Uh, uh, just the Allen Creek drain. Uh, we've uh, conducted the uh, May sampling. Has been conducted. I turned it, uh, the results in last uh, last week. Uh, so we have June and July are the two remaining events. Uh, of a total of six, and then, like like we've said, there'll be a report in September, a summer report in September. Um, was there sampling going on today? Today? Yeah. Going oh. through West Park, there were just they they had they were down in the grades and. Uh, uh, I don't. Down, okay. No, it wasn't was anything we were doing. They, they could have been. Uh, I mean, the city. Four or five or, trucks. You know, city yeah. or, or the uh, <coughs> okay. had no okay. room. I was just curious. If but our sampling, which we yeah. get assistant, well, Gelman does the actual sampling mm -hmm. and runs the samples okay. through their lab. I'm there, or a Eagle representative is there overseeing, um, and we split samples on a, a three or four for dioxane and send it to our lab, and then we sample all the all seven, uh, all seven uh, manholes for full scan volatile organics. Uh, Evan had asked us to do that, so we, we do that. Uh, this last sampling, uh, the, the, there was a dry up uh, on uh, to the uh, to the west on Arbor View. Uh, what is it, Arbor View? Just a second, please. I am not familiar enough with the with the Glendale uh, Wildwood and Arbor View. The manhole Wildwood and Arbor View. It's the it's so the highest elevation. Yeah, the yeah. It's the it's the highest you know physical elevation, and it's so uh, it is it was dry, and it has always been even from in February when it was everything was real wet, February March. It had always been the low flow one. So that's a, that was dry. That was dry. We couldn't we couldn't we you know mm -hmm. there was nothing flowing through. <clears throat> so I we only had six sample locations. So we'll we'll, we'll identify that in the summer report. <clears throat> and I, like I said, there are two more. Uh, that must be a spur if it's over there, right? <clears throat> uh, it is. Because the main branch goes up along here. Uh, do I have a quick map? I don't know. It was one of the ones that Evan had asked. You know, <clears throat> we kind of came and discussed. Uh, we came to an agreement with uh, from his uh, from his suggestions. So yeah, because the river is way over here. They call that the fair fairgrounds branch. Okay. Or Mary, Mary Few, Mary Again, Few. the uh, the Mary actual Few. locations we we <coughs> came and we we agreed or discussed with uh, Evan <coughs> Pratt of the uh, Marshall County uh, Drain Commissioner, mm -hmm. and uh, and his no, water, water Resources, resources Commissioner. Yeah. Yeah. Used to be Drain Commissioner. Yeah. 
It used to be drained. We changed so, uh, we, you know, he, we, he came up with the seven locations, you know, in conjunction with that. So no data on that yet? No, no, I just turned in the samples. Okay. Well, the, the data was it was dry. That, that, that one not dry. No, <laughs> no data on the other ones. I, I turned the other ones in. weren't dry. Right. I hope. No, they weren't. I mean, I would walk. I drove over that. Yeah. West Park was pushing. Like, we should generate electricity with all that water. Mm -hmm. like, well, let me continue. We're going to get through this sometime. Uh, we will be uh, conducting uh, surface water sampling in 2019 in June or July here. Uh, it would be the same locations that we've done in the past. Uh, I'm adding two, diff uh, two new locations, though, just to let you know. I will be sampling the Huron River in the middle of the river off of the Maple Road Bridge. It's a, a single mm -hmm. lane bridge. So we're going to dip, dip mm -hmm. there. For, uh, and we will also then take another one. I can access... It's actually the Foster Bridge. Yep. Okay, yeah. whatever it's called, I, it, it, it says the road is Maple Road. No, no. Foster. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah. It's I Maple Road. Right it's behind it when I turn. You turn yeah. your head in the direction and it'll say. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I'm swimming this way. I could have sworn it's Here's Maple Foster. Foster. Okay. That in the middle there, I can. I have mm -hmm. uh, the. I can dip down. It's the water is not past uh, where I can access it with a with a sampler tool. Okay. So, and then I will also, Roger, keep it right there. Keep it where uh, where uh, Wagner hits um, the, uh, right there, yeah. I will also uh, sampling at the, I can access the Honey Creek right there at the Huron River Drive Bridge. So where Huron River goes across right, right there. I'll do it on the northern side. Once we get past that, it gets, uh, it starts getting on railroad property and that, uh, no, I am not really. Well, where were you were sampling before was it was down here. You down thought it was here, but it was actually down here, according to your. Yeah, it's down there around the bend. So, you know, that would have been a third or a half mile away from yeah. where the so I, was. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I can access that. I confirmed that. That's good. I'm glad you changed, made that correction. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then we will also. I probably will also access down the other. That is where. Where you're pointing to, Roger, that is where they take their, uh, uh, Gelman takes their daily Romaine sample. sample. Which so. is not according to their agreement with the city. Uh, okay. It's a half mile down from, t this is where they showed that they're going to take their sample. Okay. I, I, don't, I didn't confirm that was, you know, the, uh, it, that's the. Uh, so I don't know if anybody at the city knows that. Mm -hmm. I mean, the lawyers know that, but that's a half mile away. From where the agreement says, so but the city or the FPDES, the, the agreement with the city. Okay. In other words, uh, plus it's past this other tributary. <clears throat> There's another tributary here <clears throat> that runs through what is now a city park. So this is not sampling bromate that's coming out of Honey Creek. If it is, it's very diluted. And the same for any dioxin samples there. So that's what's uh, planned in June or July. I haven't, I haven't that's good it. news. I'm glad so, you're sampling here. Yeah. Now we've got to get the company to sample bromate here. Why did you decide to do the application? Well, for, first off, uh, uh, I, I hadn't in the past because I hadn't really reconned it. We were just uh, we were just taking the further, we were taking Honey Creek down. I think the furthest north was, uh, was Dexter, where it came across, uh, Dexter. And uh, then with the, uh, with the more recent detections that uh, the city uh, had identified in Barton Pond, uh, I said, well, let's take a look to see what, you know, we had points going along the unnamed trip at Honey Creek that we had done. I wanted to, so I said, let me go look at, see if I can get to it uh, safely. And I, you know, I can get to it safely. And then uh, the one in the, the, the actual, the bridge, Foster, Foster, Foster Drive Bridge, it just was uh, because of the more recent detections at Barton. So I'll see if I, if we have any detections there. Oh, okay, so that's good. That's about two miles farther along than so that's why I added it uh, this time. I, you know, 
I guess I could have had a V8 moment if I should have had it earlier, but I hadn't done it. So we will do it uh, here and continue to do it. And that's going to be, a of what's the frequency of sampling for dioxane? Well, uh, we haven't set a frequency. It's more of the surface water sampling points. Um, so it's going to be what we've been doing is a couple times a year in the last two years or so. But we, it's not hasn't been set up as a, you know, like uh, the, the monthly thing that, that under the NPDES permit. Again, we're doing it as, as the Eagle. So will the Yellow Creek at West Park be continued on the term? After, after the six events? Right. I, I don't know. I, you know, it will be part, the Allen Creek uh, at so what I call Allen Creek, the first one we did, Allen Creek West Park SW Southwest, yeah. we, that's the surface water point. So that point will be, because we're doing, you know, we're taking the whole sweep, that part will be, you know, we'll continue with that. Okay. I'm, I'm not, I, I'm not going to, I'm going to manage expectations here. I'm not saying that we're going to do all seven no, I for, from the time, <laughs> but that's, uh, Per your request, per the cards request, we started that one, and that started uh, I think a couple of years ago. We got four, four point four, right. four or something like that, and we got nineteen, and now we're in that nineteen range. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I loop, lump that into the surface water sampling. So we'll continue. Just that. eleven blocks up, that's the vets park. It was at a thousand. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is now. One time it was at a thousand. Uh, let's see here. Oh, excuse me, Dan. So, in addition to these two new locations, there's regular surface water sampling. Yeah, I can give you. Two. Yeah, just, I, just briefly, if you could say. Uh, like yeah, let me just say. Um, I, I want to make sure I count them all. There's like 18. Pardon? I think there's like 18 locations. Uh, there. If you wanted to know, yeah. So we're talking about um, uh, West Park Southwest. Um, Glendale, we'll, we'll try, go ahead and hit Allen Creek, Glendale again. We've done that several times. Mm -hmm. uh, Little Lake, First Sister Lake, Second Sister Lake, Third Sister Lake, the Smith Pond East, Smith Pond West, those are the ponds, Roger, to, to, on the west side of Wagner. I called those Smith Ponds East, Smith Pond yeah, West. They used to be called Pete Mine Lakes. Yeah, I, I just, because it was formerly Smith property. Uh, and then the unnamed trip at, at Jackson Road, unnamed trip at Park Road, uh, unnamed trip at the disc, the outfall. You know, we'll take collect it at the outfall. Uh, we will probably also uh, collect it uh, just up upstream of the outfall if we can get into it like we did last time. Um, uh, let's see here the Huron River, uh, the HCHR. That's the one that Roger has says is wrong. You know, that's the one around the bend. It's called HCHR in my database. It's uh, Huron Creek, uh, uh, Honey Creek, Huron River. Uh, that's the A. We'll continue there. Uh, Dexter Road. Uh, we did the, the Arbor Landing Pond, which is that uh, uh, pond of that uh, right uh, off of the apartments there. It's it's really their drainage pond, you know, surface, so I'm not sure it's really influenced by any groundwater or anything. I think it's more of a surface, uh, that's what they had to put in for uh, for drainage and uh, retention. 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 But we, we've done that in the past, we'll include that. We'll do the West Park Pond, which is just down from the island. Like I said, the West Park Pond. We've know, done I, it in the past. Okay, okay, we'll, but I'm we'll, just saying that it has very little of any groundwater. It was right. When I was involved in that and was primarily responsible for getting the West Park project to include stormwater management, which actually got it, the whole thing funded because of federal money became available. Um, that captures on, uh, on as a design the water off 7th Street. Yeah. So it used to go right into the creek, but now they're running it through that pond to try and clean it up and do some mitigate, you know, mitigation and that helped it get funded we had okay. been I'm asked. Just telling you that I understand it, but we we first did it in response to uh, several emails by people who were concerned about it. Sure. so I we're going to continue with okay. it just to alleviate anybody's okay. concern realizing that it may not be a reference of groundwater issues and, and uh, it's been non-detected does that does that get the full gamut of testing well it would be dioxane you know. 
just won't have the other chemicals like you do with the no, we won't. Uh, no, we won't no. do the full scan. Okay. They're not planning to do the full scan. Yet. Does that? I can give yeah, you this if you, you want. Yeah, uh, I think that you published that, right? I yeah, this yeah. is just the latest report. Yeah. Thank and you. Yes, yeah, so I'll see it in the report. Um, but these locations are sampled two times a year. That's what we have been trying to do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I can't say that they all have been each. You know, all of them have gotten mm -hmm. twice a year. So you've already done those. So those are already in the April database. He said it's coming up. It's coming. There's 2019. It's coming up. Uh, uh, coming up <coughs> in June or July. No, but you've already. We sampled them in at least last September for sure. Uh, September, October time frame, as I remember. And I think we did some of them earlier in the spring last 2018. So. Uh, <laughs> I thought he was looking at somebody there. You know. Oh, it's not you? Okay. Well, let's okay. stop now. So, okay. Thanks, Dan. Uh, and then the, la the last bullet that I had uh, for just an update is uh, we've been informed uh, by Gelman that they are planning to do what I'm going to uh, what they've identified as the red pond cleaning. Uh, and uh, that, and so I asked, uh, in the be basically it's going to be in June, uh, for a week in June. So they'll be manipulating the pumping rates and, and that on uh, the week of June 17th. So when they informed me of that, I had several questions. I said, okay, is that all you're going to be doing? And basically it's maintenance. Uh, they don't do that yearly, but they do it as needed, but they will also be picking the, the lines between the pond and the sheds, uh, picking any uh, of their uh, 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 the uh, groundwater flow lines. They, they're pumping the, the infrastructure that they need to get water from one place to another. They'll be upgrading uh, the processor in the red shed, the, the, the microprocessor that runs that. that. The pump maintenance in the ozone room, valve maintenance in the red shed and pit, calibration of treatment system sensors as needed, pump maintenance on the Evergreen booster pump, if you do Urban Evergreen, and, uh, and then they will also be doing some work review the recently upgraded porterhouse equipment to determine if any maintenance is required. What are they cleaning up? Uh, they basically uh, do the... Uh, well, what, what, what are they taking out of the line? What are they cleaning out of the line? Uh, they, they take sediment. They take uh, anything, you know... Uh, uh, rust buildup? Rust buildup, sediments, anything that's going to restrict and their intake and, and pumping scale, whatever, on that. So. Uh, That'll be June 17th. Uh, June se the week of June 17th. They'll start uh, extraction, on start lowering ex lowering the pond on Sunday, the June 16th. Uh, it was expected with this other main that it's the last through the week. And then they'll... So they're going to be up. shut down for a week? Okay. Yes. Uh, so are you planning to do any special sampling? We have not. Uh, we've thought yeah. we've had initial discussions on that. But have not uh, have not come up with uh, uh, with a request from them for them yet. I always try to make a point of going out and observing what it looks like when there's no discharge. Right. We've done that in the past when they shut down the, down at the down at the discharge. Uh, we've done that, uh, you know, at Honey Creek there and a couple places at Honey Creek. Right. So we I can't uh, we haven't. Uh, I think it's important to continue to do that whenever there's a shutdown. Can we go? Getting to be go. escorted, I think. <coughs> you mean curious. to the pond cleaning? I don't, I don't know. Well, we, you know, if uh, we normally even, you know, they, request. They we, charge admission for that. <laughs> we, you know, we, we, if we, you know, I'm sure as a regulator, if I ask, I can go. I, although I won't be in town, I will be out of town then. So, uh, but I, I really don't know whether they would be receptive to. Uh, to local, you know, to stakeholders. We just you know, I kind of, I don't think so. Uh, just with the current um, atmosphere or negotiations or whatever, they're going to be. But, but we need to get permission from Toyota to do drone flyovers of their property. We can look angrily. There you go, Jeff. Um, just, just a change of venue issue, but the Porter Pump Station. Yeah. And June 24th, there's a public hearing at City Council. And subsequent to that, it's going to be annexed into the city, so it won't be a sile property anymore. 
So it came up on our list of the three rounds of annexation that are all going to be handled in this. Uh, this is the second round of the last mm -hmm. three. Okay. Uh, anyway, just I don't think it makes a difference, but I just wanted to. to no, undoubtedly, it out. it'll they'll have to as far as whatever the requirements in the city. Permit. They'll have to follow permit. that the permits. Yeah, or so permit. that's just FYI. maintenance or whatever they have to do as part of that uh, permitting process. Okay. Yeah, I. I, I I'm sure, out they're aware of that. Right? Right? Yeah. I mean, who they, they at, Yeah. I I have no clue. I just that's why I bring it up here. I, I mentioned it last night at council because it was <coughs> to me that it was going to be on the list, and sure enough, it was as part of the clerk's report. Um, those three properties in that along quarter there are okay are being annexed as part of this round. So I'll I'll check to make sure they're yeah. aware of that so they don't okay. get any surprises. Yeah, just wanted to give you a heads up. It's very likely that it will be annexed. So. Roger, when you said to take a look, where, when, when the at the discharge point, at the discharge point, and also downstream at Little Lake and the holding industry holding ponds beyond Little Lake, and, and I can do the, the, the anything down off their property. I mean, I go do we can do right. we just have we we schedule and and uh, they escort. I mean, the things are locked, I got to get in. Uh, the back part of the property is fenced, so we, I, you know, to go to the uh, discharge, the outfall, I, you know, I go usually go with them. So the issue with discharge is that Honey Creek gets much higher flows at times than in the past. And does that cause trouble for homeowners along the creek? Well, well, the, the main problem is yeah. that when they're discharging, maybe not at 400 gallons a minute, but when they're at 1,200 gallons a minute. Little Lake and the in-stream holding ponds <coughs> beyond that at Sunward Co-Housing were at capacity all the time. So when it rained, there's no reserve. There was no more retention capacity there. And there was erosion in the second pond. And that continued, of course, downstream. And of course now with the more significant rain events we've had the last Excuse me. dozen, two dozen, a couple of decades. And it's, um, you know, I've lost 20 feet of bank on my property because of the erosion. So Rogers House backs up to Honey Creek. Right. right. It's getting closer. Creepy <laughs> <house. laughs> It's got a little bit of a reserve, but not much. Resource used up. And uh, just uh, along those lines, uh, they identified, they notified us as, of this maintenance coming up. But they have, uh, as required, uh, they are required to notify us and have been doing, you know, any force majeure, which is a definition of anything that shuts them down or uh, from the CJ, in the CJ, that shuts them down, that it, it's not their fault. For example, the, the, I just got one VT power outage for for half a day. So they would send in, you know, identification and we're claiming force majeure. So, because they have the CJ, there are requirements of pumping and, and certain things. Uh, they had the LV4, I think I told you about last time, the LV4 went down, you know, so the pumping went down below what the CJ, so they followed through with, if to notify within 48 hours. And You know, we used to get monthly submittals of those Course, <laughs> the, the, anything if they are quarter, they're in the quarterly reports from them that I post. So it, they go through what has happened for that quarter and they'll say a date and what system was down for maintenance. You know, this system was down because of power outage. So they are summarized, not monthly. You, do you still put them in that spreadsheet? Uh, I don't know which spreadsheet you're talking about. The one that has all of the items that have been shared well the quarterly reports like i said they are in their quarterly reports uh, in, in summary so that is where and then i post those on the web page so we, someone could see how many you know could take their quarterly reports and get an idea of how, how often things are shut down yeah you have to go through each quarterly report pull up that information where before we had this nice well, first of all, we had a monthly summary from Civil that showed all of the things, all the communications behind the scenes. And then we had 
a spreadsheet that we could go to to show um, a summary of those going all the way back. And you still have that, of course. Um, it's just that it's only updated maybe once a year. Twice a year. Twice a year. And that's what, you know, when I took over for civil, that's. Did this list of documents here? said, okay, this is what. Yeah, the, you have the ones up top. Yeah, that document right there. Um, so this one says, uh, as of January 13, 2017. Okay. It doesn't sound like twice a year. But, but the one up for up above that we it's still there but she you know she hadn't even updated it so when I took her over this one here yeah the one that has stopped at 2013 yeah it's kind of dwindled to nothing yeah and then uh, oh and then the I also uh, more recently the list so I like list serve the list yeah the list serve you know I send out to people who are on the list serve what what has been posted uh, I haven't done uh, I haven't done one recently because we changed our name and I had to, they had to change the page. I know there's a lot of issues, and I'm not allowed to change the page. Right? You know, on, uh, you know, the big the big thing that has to go through IT, whatever. So they are just updated that. Uh, I mean, it's 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 very hard to get a. I mean, because you get some of the information here, some of the information is here, and some of the information is in the in this spreadsheet. Well, the information that's there, you know, is from the you know mainly the selected documents. Well, well but this one, this historic it would recently. I don't know historically what civil. Well, was. this is this historical one goes back all the way, and, and okay. it'd be really nice if Eagle. Under its new configuration, went back and brought that up to date. And just use that. Because then you have a chronological list, and it's categorized by what system it is. That was very useful, and, and especially since they put links into it. So I would request that uh, you go back and update this. Maybe up to date. That's really. That's that's really the the list of mm -hmm. everything that you've been doing, at least the one you're making public. So it, it really helped the public in order to consolidate that. Also, one, as you're redoing this website, anyway. Well, maybe historically valuable. But definitely, we split it off into the categories above. But it's this is help for data, the analytical data, the. Selected like documents, reports, and stuff, so that other one does summarize. The, the, the I mean, just the other meeting when we tried to go back and find what are all the permits. You know, I ended up going to that list, but it wasn't up to date. Resident? Yeah, is it? Is it? All right. You are you Yeah, he asked a question. question. Somebody asked me to ask this. So, is it the peaking or? Someone at the city of Ann Arbor who is responsible for verifying that government is acting and reporting in the manner that's described in the CJ. It's, it's the Eagle. So it's, it's, it's you folks. Yeah, we, we are the regulator uh, that is part of that CJ. Okay, and so as a, in the regulator function, so if there was some, we hear about this in your quarterly, if there was some kind of anomaly or something strange. Right. Or okay. and, you know, we, we, one of my big so issues, samples. you know, one of my big issues is to because make sure they are in compliance, compliance with the objectives of the current CJ, which has been modified three times. Yeah. That's why I sure was in 2011. So you take the first one, they modified it, they added some things, changed some things, second yeah. one modified it, third modification added stuff. So I make sure they're in compliance. And that also, that, that also means they're in compliance with the monitoring part of that. There's monitoring plans for three areas as based upon this. 2011 modification of the of the uh, CJ. There's the western area, eastern area, and Little Lake area, and, and there's different objectives uh, for for each of those areas. Well, two uh, you know, two of them are the same, but not expansion. 
So uh, we, Eagle would be the where the mm -hmm. buff. Ha, has so. anybody from the city ever reached out to you and said, like, do who do you, do you have to update anybody at the city? Does anybody come to you and say, hey Dan, we're just checking up and making sure everything's cool? I'm I'm just curious. No, no, no one I has mean, come kind of in have, that context. Yeah. I mean, I the city. We worked with the city, I, I, with Brian okay. uh, recently, you know, it was Matt Nod, you know, so the, they get the communications. Uh, there's a subgroup that I send stuff to, Roger's on that, uh, you know, uh, you, you guys are on that a lot of times when we get data, and the city is part of that. I don't send it out to all, I post it, and, but there's a subgroup that, uh, that we have uh, gotten communications, uh, you know, monthly when data, you know, when we get the data from, from Gellman, their monthly reports. So it's building up somewhere at the city, so we have our own sets of... Yes, that. Okay. right. Well, I mean, that, uh, Brian uh, Steglitz is the current. I also now, uh, they've hired uh, Tetra Tech right. uh, with Patty great. McCall. Yeah, uh, so I do with her, uh, you know, I've added in, added that way, and that's in that what I'll call the uh, stakeholder subgroup that I send stuff to. But everything that I do is posted also. And then I'll identify it on the listserv that, hey, this has been posted to anybody that signed up on a listserv and there's over a thousand people. I forget the latest number on the listserv. 1,200 people maybe. Well, Jeff, you asked what does the city get? The city also in that agreement, the settlement agreement with Gelman, supposedly gets the same data that's given to the DQ. That settlement agreement is not, we don't oversee that. That was a direct, it's a separate case, separate case right. that with the city and the uh, related to the Montgomery well and uh, started with that. Uh, and I don't have anything to do with that. So there may be some issues or some compliance issues that I don't deal with in the city. That's a separate agreement. Yeah, you're only regulating the consent judgment. Right. right. But it's, it's important because we don't know if they're sure. getting separate information than what the DQ gets, the Eagle gets. And in the agreement it says the city cannot release that to the public without being FOIA. So we should have a standing FOIA to get that information to make sure that the city's getting the right information and that they're not getting something additional additional information that the rest of CARD could use. You're kind of, you're kind of getting to the, the point of it, why I'm curious about these things. Yeah. So I want to make sure that... How do we, how do we have a standing FOIA to get that information? Does it, some, it has to be somebody in the city? No. no. no anybody can FOIA can be by any individual who's not in prison. All you have to do is identify so the records in sufficient detail so they can find it. So what we need to do is identify the records in sufficient detail. So Jeff is a city council member, so is Jack. Yes, I know. So I'm just what saying, do they we, call we still have to fill out a form. They don't what are, what do they call those records? Have you seen the records? You, you are certainly able to go in and see those records. You can just describe them as a separate record. You, you, yeah, you, you only have to describe it with sufficient particularity for them to identify it. So you say it's, it's information that um, the city receives under its uh, right. uh, settlement agreement. So can one of you send me what that language should be? Sure. Send me an email to remind me that I'm going to do this. Okay. <laughs> can it be an ongoing thing? Or does oh, it absolutely. Have to be you can, if, if, and this is a huge if. I, I wouldn't be surprised to learn that we're not getting the, the data that we're entitled to. Yeah. That would not surprise me. But if, if, in fact, we learn that, then we can prompt them. Well, you might be getting more information. <coughs> it, it could go either way. Right. Um, and there's also information that the city has to provide to the company. And so? And, you, and there's some restriction in there that... Uh, so when you send me that reminder, yeah. don't just send me a copy. I, I reread the settlement just the other yeah. day, and I said, S well, Send me a copy of the settlement so I can, I can read it again. It's been yeah. a while. Right. Anyway, I'm sorry, you got any more, Dan? No, that's all I had. Does anybody have any questions? I'm sure I'll get questions with additional discussion if you look at some of the agenda items. No, <clears throat> so I, I gave you the um, write-up that um, Bob Bailey put together on um, paper intrusion. Yep. 
Did you pass that on? We passed it on to our, uh, yeah, we passed it on to our, okay. the people that calculate the site-specific uh, vapor intrusion numbers, those okay. types of, okay. now I do not believe that they have formally sent anything back. Okay. I know that there has been questions. Mitch, Mitch, you know, he's up in Lansing, so we, that's where they are. Well, so, I sent the electronic version, so you're right. Send we send it on, yeah. and uh, but we have not gotten, if you want to say, okay. a formal response, you know, as a from the toxicologist okay. or toxicology group. So I did give it to um, Mike Burkhoff, yeah, okay. for EPA to look over, and he was nice enough to take it and say mm -hmm. he, they would pass it around. So um, now he proposes in that draft report a hundred part per billion paper intrusion. So could be critical because. Eagle, last I heard, was 1900. In groundwater. In groundwater. In contact with basement. So he's saying his calculations show more like 100 per billion, which is a big difference. Mm -hmm. And we can get. And, and I and I will tell you as the project manager, yeah. I don't yeah. calculate that. I'm given that number right. from that I talks know. people. I know. Uh, so oh, it's a site specific. It yes, we passed it on. I can confirm that. Okay. Because I, I double checked, I said I knew I, I knew I would get questions. So we may have somebody at School of Public Health look at it. We'll, yeah, we'll see. And uh, there's some vapor intrusion of people at SPH. Mm -hmm. And just for clarity, the DEQ doesn't have a final proposed rule dealing with vapor intrusion. No, that proposed they 1900 was a proposed rule. It's proposed. If you remember, then all that all those rule changes went south. <laughs> um, and they had to do just dioxane, they promulgated just dioxane. If you remember yep, yep. the 7.2, because the whole package, for whatever reason, uh, it was related to stakeholder participation, it was related to the internal, everything. It's still a proposed, it was a proposed package. So what if a house on the old west side is 1900, near the basement, nothing happens? Well, that's a screening number. Right. It would be, you know, it, you know, if if uh, if the DEQ uh, Eagle, you started me on it, Dan. Uh, Eagle uh, had information that there was a 1900. Yep. We would. Uh, that's a screening number. We would gather additional. That what okay. would start is gathering additional information. Okay, but just for clarity, their first value was 29 parts per billion. Then they yep. said maybe it's 19. But where they currently have now is no value. They have what they call a calculator, a vapor indoor air pathway calculator, where it has a number of factors and you plug in specific factors and out comes the number. So 1900 is not really a number. It's not a trigger. Just, well, it's not a criteria. It's a it's screening not a criteria. Number. <laughs> they don't. They don't have a criteria. Right. Is what I'm trying well, before, to say. Or before we had a. There was a promulgated criteria. Okay. I believe. The 29. That, that Dan's referencing was a, uh, if you remember, the emergency rule. Right. So right. that was a promulgated under the emergency rule that was identified uh, when we did the 7.2 drinking water number. During that process, between the first, it was only allowed to do for a year under emergency rules. During that process, that's when they we were told by stakeholders that uh, that calculation is wrong. Re take a look at that. And that's when internally they came up with the 1900, and they didn't re-up the 29 in that second six month of the emergency rule. And that's the reason. Why. And so the because the 1900 was going to be the number for the whole package in the whole package, and that promulgation, like I said, went south. It just has not occurred yet, uh, and uh, that's why they went to the individual 7.2 just to get the groundwater number. Okay, we should lobby for that. So, any other questions? Yes. Are there any updates on Gelman's renewal permit? Renewal? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, no, nothing more than what you got at that meeting. They are. I deal with you know I'm bird dog and them the NPDES permit. Yeah. Yeah. They uh, they got quite a uh, education. Let's yeah. just say uh, about uh, what I had been telling them that people are very interested, and that's why I invited them the last time to the meeting. And so they are in that process. Now, I think he was up front, and I can confirm that. They had permits from last year. They're, they're finishing up. And they understand, too, that they are 
you know, they are planning to do a public meeting. You know, remember there was a public, last time they did, there was only a public uh, comment period. Right. Right. They, uh, they, they have come to the realization that uh, that's, you know, that's going to happen. Now, realize too, I think he said it, that public um, pr a meeting does delay the actual a little bit because they do their all their permit and then they put it out for <coughs> for comment in the, in the review and the public meeting. So that'll add a little bit of time to that. But they are they know that um, if once you know the, I'm not saying they're going to do it by October first, but they know that once that date hits, that they're going to get a lot of questions. So I can confirm that they are actively pursuing what they have to do internally and that I don't have I'm not part of that right this okay. is the process that uh, <coughs> they submit essentially the eco you know, um, tentatively agrees to it and then it's published yes the meeting the, still, that's still the process that's still a process It's between Eagle and that group in within Eagle and Gelman Gelman submitted a renewal package and then then uh, the Eagle people who are uh, the permit writer, you met the permit writer, which it was uh, um, Jessica Stiles, right? And then her, her supervisor, Tarek, um, they, uh, Jessica kind of is the, like a project manager, so it leads it through. They're doing the, the biological, the ecological, they're doing all kinds of stuff in there, and she leads that. And then, uh, they then they get information from back and forth from Gelman. They'll ask Gelman questions. So you will get it as to comment after had, had a draft, if you want to say a draft permit has been issued. So it's still draft. So that comment period and that uh, and that uh, public meeting can alter that draft. And that's why they that's why it's it's kind of identified. But the public doesn't get to see the original draft right away. Well, they're, they're rigid. all that's been submitted right now has been, I guess, Roger, I don't, I can't say this. All that's been submitted from Gelman is the, is the uh, request to uh, for the, the new permit. Right. All the inf that information, I think you got a copy of that. That's, and I don't know if they do a draft that they send back to Gelman and there's some back and forth. I really can't answer that firsthand. I'll check on that for you. Yeah. Uh, but eventually when they're, when the, the draft permit uh, is, Come to if you want to say they're come to agreement whether Eagle comes up with a draft permit, that's when they'll send it out for public and and uh, public comment and a public meeting. One thing that Derek said bothered me. He said the discharge limit in the permit is based on what the treatment system can do. Right. Yes, it's uh, yes. Well, and the water quality criteria. Yes. Well, no, he specifically said that please, Roger. Well, I, I, I believe he's confirmed to me what Dan is saying. It, it, you know, it's kind of both, uh, but if you have a... If they can't attain the water quality criteria... They've got to change that. Then they have to change their technology. <laughs> yeah, see that, so there's a, little bit of, there's a little bit of both with that. So, and if you, just to update everybody, um, the water quality criteria has changed since the last permit, in the sense uh, the, uh, um, the the last time uh, there was the uh, it was and I'm gonna have to get the numbers wrong but approximately 280 was uh, for uh, was the uh, non uh, non use uh, surface water number nine that was not near near an intake it was 35 or 36 if it was near an intake the number uh, for the compare of dioxane now it's 3.5 and um, and uh, uh, which oh, one I'm was sorry. It was two, 2,800, and and um, it was 2,800 before GSI that number, and the uh, 36. Now it's 280 and uh, 3.5. So they have already I they've already talked, you know, in in discussions when they had some questions of me of some background information. They had already identified that, uh, yeah, Gelman right now, their discharge numbers, let's say three to four, you know, what they're getting now. So they will, you know, they'll have to, they'll adjust that. And uh, if, uh, if it comes up lower, then Gelman has to adjust their, uh, their treatment train, their system. Discharge sometimes six and seven. I, I didn't hear what you said. Sometimes it's six and seven. 
Yes, they're allowed under the current permit. They're allowed a, a monthly average of of, the, yeah. of seven, and a, and a daily max of twenty two. Yeah, and you know, Roger, we asked them to please look at VOCs, uh, volatile organic chemicals, because Gelman used a lot of them, and there's contamination of the volatile organic chemicals about the site, and they're extracting groundwater about the site. So whether their treatment trained for dioxane is also treating the volatile organic chemicals is a question. So and they are they are considering that. I can confirm that, that already. Thank you. They are keeping that consideration from your request or from uh, yours and, and, and the groups. Except where they're purging from on the core is not really close to where they have concentrations of the OCs are. So they haven't changed their treatment method yet. No, it's no, well, it's, okay, it's, historically or within, current? Within the last couple of years. No, it okay. is, it is so the last couple of years, it's an ozone. Yeah. Uh, and uh, hydrogen peroxide. And how low can that get? Uh, I believe they they have. Uh, I think they're in the range. They have identified that they can hit plus uh, plus or minus three right now with the, how the way this well, the treatment tree. train is set up. Now, yeah. see, you're getting into they can add more ozone and add more hydrogen and the peroxide. Will they, they can do. Well, they have to change if the NPDES permit requires it. I. I can't. I, I can't answer that specific. How you just asked that? Now it's at three point five. Yeah. If it's uh, if it if it goes down to three point if it goes down less than three point five, they and they that. can't they can't provide lines of evidence that their treatment can hit that, then they will have to modify that treatment if they want to use an NPDES permit and discharge to a surface water body in Michigan. Hmm. So, All right. So yeah. So. Yeah, it's a much it's a lower number and they used to they know they that used to, their system in the past way back used to get it down to non detect right so they used uh, they went to a cheaper a system. they yeah. went to a cheaper system that wasn't as good and also adds bromate to the water which is not good so creates <coughs> yeah. go ahead Roger all right so that's it no more questions uh, let's go around and introduce people that came in after being introduced the first time. Spencer Weaver. We tell, have tell, yeah, tell them what you guys are doing. Sure, I'm Spencer Weaver with Fourth View, and we're kind of interested to learn a bit more about the situation with Gelman, uh, possibly look at putting together an article or a timeline on it. And I'm Dylan Thomas, and I'm with Spencer as well. I'm Dean Mitchell, I'm a member of the Sierra Club. We're doing everybody again? No, no, just we're just the been doing people. Okay. Not anymore. This is Jeff Hayner. Jeff Hayner. 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 Yeah, there it is. That's around. All right. Uh, so there's an item here, a preview of the June 6th Joint County Working Session. Yeah, two days. Uh, two days from now. Yeah. Who wants to do that? Anybody got any details about that? Jason, you got anything on that? <laughs> uh, I wasn't prepared to uh, share it up yet, <laughs> but uh, I mean, I brought it to the thing. But, but yeah. I would be happy to share uh, whatever you might want to share it on. Tell us about it. I got a question about it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So it said in the the uh, overview of what's going to be happening. It said there's various presentations. Can you let us? What do you got in mind there? So my various presentations. Here, I'll just, I'll just stand this here. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> for folks that don't know me, I'm chair of the Washington County Board of Commissioners. Um, used to work for Congresswoman Dingle, before that Congressman Dingle. Uh, so I'm very familiar with this issue. It was one of the issue areas that I covered when I worked for Mr. Dingle. Um, as a county commissioner, I've been very involved in it, working with Jason Monchieski and our other commissioners. Uh, essentially what we're doing on Thursday is, um, I guess the long and short of it is that we had, we've had a lot of different meetings over the years, more recently with the elected officials. We've had a lot of smaller meetings with uh, the attorneys, we had a smaller meeting with the attorney general, 
Uh, we had that meeting that many of you were at um, with Congresswoman Dingell. Uh, and in the, the last meeting we had, which was a meeting, a smaller meeting with Attorney General Dana Nessel, she essentially posed the question of what do you all sort of want from us? Um, and Congresswoman Dingell shared that the governor has essentially asked her the same question of what exactly does the community want? Our hope by bringing everybody together, and I know this is a, an optimistic hope, but by bringing everybody together at the table at the same place at the same time, not just smaller groups, but our entire boards of the four different jurisdictions, is that we can get to some sort of unified path forward. Um, maybe it's not something that everybody is thrilled with or everybody uh, would have as their first choice, but if it's something that we can all agree on, our hope as, as the Board of Commissioners, uh, who have not taken a sort of recent position on this, is really to get us all unified and moving in the same direction. The city has been very active recently. Sioux Township and Ann Arbor Township have, um, I think, been pretty clear uh, so far in their, their view on it. Um, but we're sort of trying to call the question at this point to say, let's all work together, establish a plan that we can all work with, and move forward on the same page. So who else are you looking for to get involved if we've got all those people already? So that's basically uh, it. So card is so you are all invited. Um, I, I believe you should have received an email inviting you um, from our staff. Um, and we wanted the each municipality to come. The city posted as a public meeting. I believe Sato Township did as well. Um, Mike has uh, graciously agreed to be there and has I think one other person coming. Um, so our hope is to really focus the electives because what we need to present is a either a letter that says we want Superfund designation to the governor, uh, whether that's immediately or whether it's on some sort of timeline, uh, or if it's an agreement that we don't want something, we don't want Superfund. Uh, that's sort of what we're trying to get to, is what exactly do we want at this point? So we can send an ex explicitly clear message to the governor and to the AG uh, of what we're looking for and what we're hoping for as a community. Because what they asked us is what does the community want? It's really hard to say, well, these jurisdictions want this, uh, and these jurisdictions want this. Uh, you don't really present a unified message there to either the, the governor or the AG. But what if that's what comes out of Thursday's meeting? It's possible. Yeah. But our hope uh, is to try and bring us to something we can agree on. So, so when we, the city did a resolution, and our city mm -hmm. resolution mm -hmm. charged our administrator with helping organize this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when we recognize that uh, the different municipalities have different Mm -hmm. And so they might have different approaches mm -hmm. where the townships mm -hmm. are have more yeah. concerns that it might be protective and you gotta pull it back because of the future yeah. concerns with wells versus you know, so there's always different needs. Right. Um, and uh, you know, I asked the administrator at council last night how his Friday meeting was with the with the group of administrators that he brought together. Mm -hmm. He seemed kind of positive about it. Um, <laughs> yeah, he you know. seemed positive, but, but I, I want to raise a concern. Yes, Sorry no, I, I think we're going the same way. But he, he was <laughs> going to give us a letter, and then today we got an update that the letter was going to come from the city attorney by noon tomorrow, and it was going to be attorney-client privilege. And so I'm concerned about how I can go into this meeting on Thursday night and have an open discussion if the input that I got as a result of the meeting last week is confidential. Now, I don't know if if you get an update from whoever attended the meeting from the county, and it's not confidential, I guess you could share it with us. It was great. It was great. Mike, you were there, right? Well, I was there, but because I was not an intervener, they chased me out. Look, that's unfair. They <laughs> asked me to leave uh, 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 prior to the discussion about... Uh, so when I left, what happened in the meeting was it was a discussion uh, where various parties um, identified their wish list, essentially. And uh, then uh, the interveners uh, asked me to leave so that they could develop a uh, litigation strategy, was the phrase they used. And Mike, the parties were the administrators. Yes, from. so Greg Dill was there from the from the county. Okay. Um, I'll this guy. Yeah, Howard was, was there. Howard Bryce was, was Bryce. there. Bryce was there. Yeah, I was there. Attorneys for the city and for. Mm, so, 
I can't remember. It's, no, Sias wasn't I don't think their city uh, Sias attorney wasn't no. there, and there was a, there was one other attorney. I'm not sure, and the county's attorney was also not there. I wonder if it was our man from Bondman. Yeah, he was there. Okay. Yeah, Fred. Fred. Yeah, I know Fred really well. Yeah. So, so anyway, um, yeah, he was there representing the city. I will say, I think part of the reason we wanted okay, to bring everybody together on Thursday is that our administrative staff and our attorneys recommend approaches to us. They can certainly give us recommendations, but ultimately it's the elected officials who have to make the decision as to what we do. Either outcome, uh, whether we do nothing or whether we ask for Superfund designation, could have a very significant impact in our community. Uh, there are pros and cons to each approach, risk to each of them. Uh, there's certainly risk of doing nothing different, and there's certainly some risk of going to Superfund. So we really want to bring the elected together. Part of the challenge on Thursday will be what we can discuss in public versus what we can discuss in a closed session. So we particularly wanted this meeting where we post it publicly in its official meeting so that we have the opportunity to go into closed session because then all the elected officials can have the conversation together around the legal strategy, um, at least the interveners, so we can have that conversation candidly with each other uh, and be legally allowed to do that in a way that doesn't give away any of our lawsuit. Also, uh, Laura, Laura get Ruben. kicked out again. <laughs> yeah. well, eventually, it wasn't kicked out. <laughs> we had arranged that in advance, I believe. Right. Um, <laughs> there, uh, Laura Rubin was also present. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She part of that sort of I want to clarify some of the proposed format for Thursday, because you know I was at the other meetings, and prior to the Dana Nessel meeting, everyone was asked to have a spokesperson for their group. Well, this time I'm hoping everyone from the boards can have, participate in the discussion and you can elicit opinions because you're going to hear a diverse range of opinions. Yeah, yeah. that's what. It was kind of stilted last time. Yep, no, that, so I agree. Saying. I think that's the, I mean, if we, you know, if, if portions of our boards agree on sort of the same thing, there's no reason to reiterate the same exactly. points. However, I do think everybody should be welcome to speak there, speak freely um, at that meeting. I mean, really what we wanted to have is a public discussion of this, because we have so many meetings that are uh, not exactly public or we're not allowed to invite, like we work very hard to not invite too many county commissioners to meetings so that we don't have quorum, so we're not breaking any laws. Well, ultimately everybody's going to have to make a decision on this, at least at the county board. I think our, our plan is to make some sort of decision in the next um, the coming future here whether it's the next few months <coughs> or or now or whatever we're hoping to make a decision we think everybody needs to have the ability to have that full discussion in public it, there's a public hearing aspect is there not also so there's public comment um it's an official washington county uh working session so there's a three minute public comment period yeah, that's the same rules as us so I talked to uh, Yosef Rami within the last two months, and he's told me that he's convinced that the county board actually passed a resolution in support of Superfund, and that he felt that that was a done deal. How does the county board feel now? We have a 50, over, almost 50% 50 of our board is brand new. Um, so you're not gonna honor that, that, that resolution? Would you guys consider moving to rescind that? I don't know if we necessarily need to rescind it. I think what we need is a, an approach forward at this point in time. I and mean, we've had a lot of conversations as commissioners of, um, I think, interest in doing something different than we've been doing in the past and, and taking some sort of clear action. Um, I would say it would be a... So that resolution doesn't hold this current commission to... I haven't seen standard. more of the exact resolution, but I think it was asking specifically the EPA to review Superfund designation. I don't know if it's the same as, I don't, so what we need now is a, a unified approach to the well, governor we, to say we want you to ask for Superfund well, designation. The, yeah, and, and to do that, Jason, as you know, it's just a simple letter. Right. I mean, it can be two or three sentences like the McLeod letter was from the governor to the US EPA. The, 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 uh, the, the request is, Governor, please send a concurrence letter mm -hmm. to US EPA continuing the process of designating the Gelman site as the Superfund site. Yeah. Right, I think that's the request that's on the table. That would need to be decided, I think, by 
I think all four of our municipalities um, would need to agree to that and to be on board with that. So all four has to agree or nothing gets no. sent? No. I don't know. I mean, not exactly, but... Just to step in Sorry, for, for Jason, yeah. I think that like all of the all of the city council resolutions are great, but really, you know, whether it's one or four, I think the most impact is going to be with the governor, you know, just to back up Debbie Dingle here, having like a, a unified front going forward. There hasn't been an agreement to that effect? That if four don't join, they, it, nothing will get sent? It's not that there's an agreement, okay. it's just that there's, because it is a full community and the governor has to represent the entire community, um, I, I think that that's something that she's going to want to support the entire community. Yeah, the a unified message is going to be more powerful, powerful no, and we have to remember that Debbie Dingle is a very skilled facilitator. And so I am optimistic that this process uh, will have a good outcome. I think Thursday's going to be a great meeting. There's a reason yes. we asked Debbie to facilitate this yes. discussion. Yes. Uh, and the reason I asked about presentations, I wondered if Dan was going to, if, oh, if so anybody was going to. Well, I've, presentations. Presentations. I, I've seen a, pre yeah. a draft presentation that uh, Kristen Schrighoffer is going to be giving. Okay. And um, I think Roger's seen it too. And yeah, Shane's seen it too. And, suggested um, a couple changes. She's going to be providing that as one of the presentations, I think, Jason. That's all we were thinking of. We really wanted this to be more discussion than, I mean, everybody's been. Yeah. And that public that public comment might really go on. I mean, I've been I kind of sharing it. <laughs> <laughs> we are going folks. to, uh, I think, encourage folks if they sort of agree with each other to maybe uh, limit their comments if they can. Who knows how far that request will go, but. Um, it seems to set, it seems to yeah. kind of take care of itself. We I've noticed that, especially on like zoning issues, and there's a whole bunch of people from the neighborhood, and then all of a sudden somebody realizes, hey, they already said everything. So I'm just yeah, but it's still good. good to get it's up. still good for sure. It is. Yeah. I wonder this map behind you. Yeah. Are the results? Yeah. When 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 the first petition went out to the EPA, posted a form asking people who visit SRSW to weigh in on whether they supported having this be a super fun back in 2016, 2007. This is just a, about a year's worth of responses. There's over 500 responses. You can see they're in all jurisdictions supporting the EPA. So there's 500 people that are already united on this. And then we've got the change dot we've got the, more recent. We got a more recent oh, one. And, and then they wouldn't have kept that it. So if there if it doesn't go to the EPA soon, these people are all going to be dissatisfied and upset. And voters. Yeah. Say one other thing that it's important that we get people to attend this and it's also important that we get good media coverage. Yes. And I've already talked to the reporter for Fox News too. And he hasn't committed yet, but it would be a little bit of a challenge. Uh, yeah, I think. And, and EMU? Uh, well, I don't know. Jason, did you send the press release out to the local media? Yeah, but I just spoke to WEMU today. They will be there. Oh, okay, great. And then my other question is why has the University of Michigan been silent on this issue? And have they been invited? So, oh, just invite them. Okay, go ahead. They, they are actually, <laughs> yeah, they've been, they're on our list and they've been at all the stakeholder meetings. Um, oh. So they are, they've had a representative in the room at all the stakeholder meetings that we've had for at least the past two years. Um, why they've chosen to remain rather quiet is a mystery to me at least, but I know that they are, um, they're, they're paying attention and they're, um, they've been RCP, they've been there, they've been introducing themselves. So I am, Similarly curious, but they're they're in the loop. Is this so someone from government relations or from the environmental division? Oh, the environmental yep. division. Because she was at the quarterly. I think I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Quarterly. She's yeah. always she's yeah. there. She's yeah. just quiet. Oh, okay. But they're they're staying involved. Okay. Jeff, to answer your question earlier really about presentations, the only we sort of we went back and forth in presentations. Uh, Dan and Roger and I had some discussion about that as well. Um, what we really want is just a very basic presentation of here's what we're discussing. Um, trying to avoid the points that maybe there's disagreement on, um, just to give some sort of starting point um, as to, for any, somebody who has never 
paid attention to what's happening with Gelman, uh, which is probably a rare number of people, but... Um, I think it's a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so we wanted to some, like, some very brief, like, 10-minute yes. or presentation to just set the stage of what we're talking about, so that if anybody's there, they don't just jump into, like, the middle of a conversation. Right. But we really wanted to limit that part, because we wanted to have this opportunity to bring the elected officials together. I think we're... From my conversations with a lot of people, a lot of the other elected officials in the other communities, I mean, Jack and Kathy, I mean, I think we're getting to a, a point where we, I think we can get to a point where we agree on a strategy forward. Um, I think we can. And maybe I'm not overly optimistic, but I believe we can. Uh, I, I think that discussion will help. Uh, perhaps the, the closed session discussion on the, you know, update on the legal, uh, the lawsuit, uh, will help that as well, but I think we could get to some sort of agreement um, moving forward that we could agree on. General question. I feel like, you know, I've been a card rep for two and a half years. There's a lot, lot, lot of information that's shared here. Dan and Roger have a wealth of information. And I'm wondering if there isn't value in having them speak briefly. I mean, even if it's 10 minutes. I don't think it's necessary. I looked at Kristen's presentation, and it's like Jason says, what she does is she says, here's the problem. Here's the contamination, here's where it is, here's it in the soil, and the groundwater, in this area, things like that. If people start asking questions like, what's the Superfund process? Then that may be an issue. But right now, I don't see it as an issue at all. I think the presentation's really pretty cut and dry. It just says, here's the wealth of the problem we're dealing with, and it uh, doesn't even talk about the two options. It just says, you know, here's the environmental problems we have, and here are the risks that you have to the public from air and water and you know, whatever. If, if we start getting into a lot of the details, it will take up the whole meeting, yes. and right. people will say, well, this is why nothing's been done, because right. there's not a entity strong enough to take care of all of this. And the other observation I have, Kathy, is we've had four stakeholder meetings where you've had the DEQ and the US EPA there, okay? So you had a chance at those four stakeholder meetings where almost all the elected officials were there to ask questions of the US EPA and the DEQ and get responses. So I think people, the elected officials, put it that way, know what the issues are and know what the finer points are now after we've had these discussions and presentations. <coughs> and I think there's things that can be said that, you know, speak to the consent judgment and other things without violating our, our, our gag orders on that. I mean, if, for instance, if I was to say every time I hear the word litigation strategies, I reach for my wallet, <laughs> um, you know, because we've spent almost a million dollars in the last three years with little to show for it. Uh, through litigation, and so that's just that's like my take on that, and I think that's okay to say that at the table. I don't think that violates any, you know, just as a counterpoint to, you know, what 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 is our measure of progress on this issue? You know? I'll go back to what Dan was saying. I, I think that it's important to realize that people who are going to show up to this meeting are not going to be uninformed. You know, it, it's going to be a self-selecting group. People are going to kind of know what. Except for the venue. <laughs> Except for the who? The venue. What do you mean? It's a weird venue, but it's a 242 church. Yeah. What I'm concerned about is a lot of 242 church members who really don't know the details. It's possible. Absolutely right. Because oh, okay. even the pastor seemingly didn't have some of the information. Sitting on top of it and they don't know about it? Well, the other thing is, they're a, if it becomes a super fun site, they're a potentially responsible party because they're, they're an owner of the property. Yeah. Yep. So was Smith and so were Gelman. They're all in the line of fire there. So <coughs> it is a bit of a conflict of interest. Had they there, there had them talk about, about what they would prefer. Uh, so I, I will certainly take responsibility for selecting the site. We looked at a number of different sites. It was essentially somewhere on U of M's campus or there. Because um, the schools were too busy this time of year. Yeah, yeah they just insane. they just weren't. That's what we we tried several other options before right. that site. Um, I do think there's something to be said about having it right on that site where mm -hmm. it's close to those who are most impacted. Um, the alternative was looking at like our Learning Resource Center over in Washington or the community college. 
it just seemed so far from, from the neighborhood um, that I, I sort of pushed very hard to say, let's just do it on right. the site. It's not perfect, but I think it's there's more value in having it there. And you probably didn't know about the con this, this, this other event that's overlapping. We did, but that ends a little bit sooner, and it's not in the same room. And the guy who's organizing that event actually has reached out to our office. He's super excited about the fact that they're both happening. Okay. Um, and he's like trying to funnel people from his event into this one. Um, what's that? What's that? Like what is it? Event? <laughs> so it's um, that's Spark event. A two, yeah, oh, it's a that's Spark right, event. It's, it's a the Tech right. three sixty, yeah. And so he actually called our office because they have a bunch of people working on different environmental things, and and he just said he he talked about it because he was like there are people working on these cleanups and. Um, ways to remedy this situation, and I've let them all know that this is happening right after, and they should go. And um, well, good, you know. that's a chance for us to okay, so. focus on the economic development aspects of cleaning this up. Yeah. <laughs> the benefits <laughs> to the community. Oh, for sure. It's, I think what what is the I, point of the public comment period? It's required. It's lawful. It's required. Yeah. Because I do is think there's first? some interesting. Is public comment first. Yeah. yeah. Right. Can it be reordered? No. Uh, well, is there an agenda that I have to all agree idea. on? Well, well, the we thing is that that's probably Is it going to be that formal? Would, would uh, it be more uh, useful <laughs> to have it at the end of the meeting? Yeah, that makes more but sense to me. Why is that? Because, well, because, because then they will have heard informed. Or certainly to have Kirsten, Kristen, I always mix up her name, sorry, there are too many Kirstens and Kristens and Christies. But um, do a presentation before the public comment, like get more informed. Mm -hmm. I, I have one concern is that there is a trend, and it's national, for stacking meetings. And, and, and Roger's comment kind of brings that to mind. You know, there are even, there are businesses now that, that pack meetings with one side. You know, where they give them talking points, they give them t-shirts, they give them mm -hmm. signs to hold up. And they all get paid fifty dollars to show up at the city meeting. So that is just one concern I have. So I think you really should be thinking about what's the purpose of the public meeting. How can it be be you know handled efficiently? If you don't want people to say redundant things, maybe should we think about calling for a show of hands? Um, that's one way to get people. Like, so fifty people feel the same way for something Vince says, and fifty people don't have to see up and say it. But if someone's trying to sway this one way, you better believe it that they're going to get all 50 of their side get up and say it. That's my concern. And then the other thing is that when the interveners go into their private session, I think it would be, I mean, I hope you're right. I hope that there is a kumbaya moment and that the jurisdictions come to an agreement on whether to move forward or not to the super fund. But even if you don't, I wish you guys could come to an agreement to put a date certain to end the confidential negotiations. Because honestly, I think that Gelman is playing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, they're just gonna just, you know, why yeah. So, I mean, if nothing else, you get all these bodies together, can you at least say, well, at least let's yeah, say yeah, that date certain, there's yeah. a date certain that these confidential negotiations will end. Yeah. So can I respond to that? You may. So <laughs> I, I, I'm a lawyer. I wouldn't characterize myself as optimistic as Jason had characterized himself. But um, mm -hmm. I, I will say that I'm hopeful that we can, in a unified manner, approach this. But I'm going to say that if, if we can't all agree then we're going to get as many who can agree to do something. And we are, there are those of us who are going to add the extra layer on that of a timeline. Yeah, so yeah, if, if somebody says six months to me, I'm not in. I'm not going to wait six months. Me personally, I'm not speaking for my body or anything. But, you know, so I want you to understand that we're going into the room to try to accomplish something in a unifying manner. But I, I'm not afraid to not, not have unity. Um, if it's only three of us or or even only one body that comes out of that room and, and seeks the the governor's support for um, going forward, then, then so be it. Um, but I'm actually hopeful that we, we can go into that room it's and we can have hopeful. that construct, constructive dialogue and, and come out um, 
with at least a majority of the group supporting something um, in, in the pretty near term. I think, I think one of the big, yeah. the big issues is going to be to make sure that people understand that if we don't do anything, that's ec actually economically the worst decision we can make. If we start doing something, that clearly will, you know, Dan had published that, you know, information and it's available online. It's pretty clear if you do something, your property values stabilize and probably will go up. If you don't do anything, if you have a lot of uncertainty, which we've had, that is the worst case scenario. We don't want to be there anymore. We want to have some certainty. Mike, okay. you were good. Yeah, I was just going to say, so what's the plan? <coughs> I've been unable to get an answer to um, what happens after the, so they go into closed session? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, are we all supposed to sit there and wait for <laughs> an hour and a half while they go around? That's also and then my, they come out or what? I mean, that, I that's, that's, we'll, that's, that's, that's also yeah. my question. I think we're talking we'll about making a decision, but is the decision going to be made that when happens. everyone's together? So or is the decision uh, going to be made by the interveners? So legally, you can't session. make it a final decision in closed session. So we can in closed session, or at a working session, or at a working even. session even. So yeah. we can get a sense of what what each board wants to do, um, but we cannot get a, a formal uh, decision at that point. Um, so each body would go back and either pass a resolution signing on to a letter um, or agreeing to a, a certain plan uh, individually uh, after that meeting. So after, after, after the closed session, as Mike says? Yeah, but not immediately at that same meeting, because it's a working session, so each of our bodies have to... So do you expect the audience to disperse when you go into closed session? Yeah, that's what we're going to recommend. If people want to stay and wait for us to come back and, and adjourn, that's... What about having... How will we know what the decision is? Second day. What about having information sharing? We'll tweet. The information sharing <laughs> for... President Trump will let you know. Exactly. What do you mean information sharing? Well, there might be people that, that want to discuss a bit more. More detail? Among themselves with some experts nearby. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, that is a good question. Well, how will we be able to, again, understand what the decision is? Yeah. There won't be a decision. There will be a discussion. There, we will come to a general sense of the room, okay, and then each individual body will have to go back to their own official meetings okay. to take actual okay. so decisions. So June 17th is action. our meeting, yeah. the first meeting after this. We have a working session on the 10th. I think it had the 7th. Somebody could yes. bring a written statement that you could all just sign on to by chance. Well, I thought that's what the letter that we were asking the administrator was. Just one chance. That's, that's, that's what I understood it to be, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, there would be a letter that people Spons. could agree to sign off on. Yeah. And that would be the, if you will, resulting document. Well, that, that's that's kind of what I thought was going down. But, you know, it's, not it's, it's very simple to do that. I mean, even if in closed session you guys are going to do something, it's a three-sentence, you know, letter. Uh, you could say, you know, in closed sessions, we have agreed that, you know, we're going to follow the following path. Make sure they sign it. Uh, my thought would be sort of taking from that, that closed session uh, what exactly the next step is, and then each body would come up with, and they actually one of us would just have to come up with, if we agree to something, one of us would just have to write up a resolution, uh, and then we could share that with each other. So, for example, the city of Ann Arbor passed their resolution um, directing Howard to schedule a meeting with each other, with the other bodies. Uh, we took that, Kathy sent me the word document of that. I took the exact language and we passed that at the county directing our administrators to set up this meeting. Um, so we could do that same approach with a final sort of uh, Certainly. Okay. path forward. But it is, a lot of this is very ambi uh, ambiguous in terms of the answers we can give because of the uniqueness of this, because of the, the lawsuit side of it and the fact that we have to do some closed session. Uh, the public comment is a requirement. Um, I didn't want to discourage public comment and say we hope people don't come speak in public because I think the public is always welcome to share their thoughts with us. But the primary focus of this meeting is to bring the electeds together to be able to have those, I'd say, two conversations, the one that's in public uh, and the other one that's around the legal side She's of been waiting for it. Thanks, Arthur. Um, basically, I think you touched most of my points. I want to just mention that um, I was in a meeting last night with Sue Schenk, 
and she also was thinking about ways to get some people to raise their hands to a particular questions. So you might want to craft something mm -hmm. ahead of time. And I also support having something written so that each of the separate bodies leave and talk among themselves about the exact same thing, ultimately. Mm -hmm. well, we can have that form letter available yeah. for people to yeah. look something. at, but it needs to yeah. be approved at a post yeah. individual <laughs> yes. Well, those of us from each of the bodies can, can inspire. But Jason and I could, could um, agree that he's going to sponsor something at the county and I'm going to sponsor something at the city. And it doesn't take the whole body being in the room to draft the, the, that sort of resolution if, if we agree on anything. And if we don't agree, then I'll go to somebody else on the county commission to sponsor. <laughs> it would be nice to have something in hand in case, by chance, everybody agrees. Yeah. <laughs> Jason, is your expectation well, that each of somebody for each of the jurisdictions is going to make a presentation of some sort? I don't think a presentation necessarily. Uh, but maybe that's really not clear. I haven't prepared anything because it's not clear what was going on, frankly. I mean, <laughs> you're, you're, you're the thing. Well, mine is easy. My board has already authorized me to sign the letter to the governor. They did it in the past. They did it again last month. Okay. So it's done. Okay. So you're as far as we're concerned. Yeah, maybe, but, maybe, but maybe, but that's what I'm saying. If there's, if we're making presentations, then so can you uh, provide us some with, with your last resolution? Oh, sure. The last one was just a voice vote. I mean, as I told them I was coming to the meeting that, you know, who was coming, one other board member said they were going to come, and so I just said what the purpose of it was, and asked mm -hmm. whether they would authorize me is to sign a letter to the governor asking that it be designated as uh, on the circle, you know, was, and it's, it was unanimous vote. It's not even written, that's not even a written resolution. The previous one's on. I think it's important that we have a very positive inviting there. And, and one of the things that I keep reminding myself is that not making a decision is a decision to do nothing. Mm -hmm. And we have to state that. And then also many people say, if it goes to the EPA, we'll lose control. But we don't have control <laughs> now. <laughs> You know, so those those are the two themes that that I think yes. are important. Yeah. Yeah. I want to return to one of the things that Rita mentioned, which is the idea that there will be a pro pollution turnout to speak against the but EPA. Just, but I, I, I'm mischaracterizing it. Yeah. I know that, yeah. but I, I don't I don't imagine that. I think that the biggest problem that we actually have is some of the policymakers are dragging their feet. And I'm not going to mention any names or anything, but. We, Please do. No, no. <laughs> I'm not going to do that because, in fact, we all have to try to agree on something. Yeah. And so I am really encouraged that Debbie Dingle is leading this discussion because the last time we all got together, she she actually um, bent wills and and, mm -hmm. and, and and made people say things that they had not previously said. But we do care. We, 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 we have unanimity yes. for Those the resolution. Okay. Absolutely. What? Well, at our at our yes, body, the council we had, unanimous. We had unan unanimity to please progress this. Yeah, and, and you took that. The time is right. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's yeah. really what we want is we want to continue to build on Debbie's efforts to make you know this these bring, efforts unanimous. Bring, you bring some out of the way that we can't do that anymore. Do we know why people who are reluctant to move forward are reluctant? So we can address. Well, it's kind of like the year ago. We don't know why. No, I mean, I mean, I kind of that. Yeah, there's too many conversations going on. I'll never be able to transcribe this tape. So, you're going to put together something that the four jurisdictions can use as a focus and maybe tweak a little bit, and then maybe something will come out of that. Hopefully that will be a product that will give people encouragement. This will get uh, progress forthwith. Yeah, and this discussion is actually really helpful. So I will, I'll take this back and um, Jason and I, we can chat. Because um, this really is Jason's district, Katie Scott's district, um, much more so than, than mine. My role is just that I've had a lot of history with this. And so my sole focus of this really is to try and find a common point or timeline that we can all agree on. Whether that's three months, six months, 
no time at all. There, everybody's in different places, uh, but I don't think they're that far apart. Um, so uh, my my hope is to try and find that that common ground. And Debbie, Debbie and I have spoken extensively about it. Um, that is her hope as well. So Debbie and I both just want to pull people together and try and find where that common ground is. I think there's two ways to go about that. One is. Um, you know, to do a, a detailed resolution that's got all kind of findings in it, that's going to be a lot more fraught with disagreement. Right. Um, and I think that what you, I mean, like, for example, ours, each jurisdiction can have its own resolution as to the reasons why it's going to support, hopefully, that they will all support uh, approaching EPA for, for a designation. But as Dan said, the letter can be very simple. It just asked the governor to approve. Yes, and, 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 and yeah, we right. should never forget the relief valve on this whole project is they don't need a letter from the governor to act. They can. But they're looking for it. So they we might as well get it. And we're going to hopefully we so can provide it. It's best to have all the ducks in the room. Yes. Well, well, one additional point I'd like to make is that the closed session is less about this letter than about us learning what's going on in the litigation. So we could go in this closed session and find out that the consent judgment gives us everything we need and we don't have to go to the EPA. I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I, I that would be wonderful news. <laughs> yeah. but I don't um, know that's and so I, page, yeah. I, I really believe that after we have the open session and we discuss um, asking um, for the governor's support, we're going to go into the closed session and we're going to learn how the consent judgment negotiations are going, and um, I, I don't see any reason to be optimistic that we're going to learn anything that's going to change uh, our minds about um, asking for the governor's support. You know? I think the key word there is learn. We're coming together to hopefully listen to each other yeah. yes. and to learn from each other about what the city of Ann Arbor folks think, what the South Township folks think, what the county folks think. Yeah. Vince made a great point. We are. We, we need to move forward. That's why we're having this meeting because we need to identify a way forward. We have a great opportunity. My hope for this meeting is that we come together and we listen to each other. And many people in that room are going to be very polarized, and they're going. This is my position. I'm not budging off my position ever, ever, ever. And I hope that we come into the room, and even if we have our set positions on what we want, whatever that might be, we at least listen to each other and understand each other and we can come out with unity, as Kathy's been saying. Yeah, and, and, and we understand each, each other better coming out of that discussion. That's, that's my hope for this. Okay. And in these processes, I haven't seen as much polarizing opinion as one would expect normally. And Katie Scott had a listening session mm -hmm. at the library, and I attended that. And it's like people came in and some of them didn't trust the EPA mm -hmm. or they didn't know what to do, but a lot of people left educated mm -hmm. and... There was overwhelming more, support for the EPA option. I yeah. didn't want to say that as an no. elected <laughs> official, but yes, it, 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 was getting, it was a process of getting to yes. And I, 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 since I've been involved with this, I've been elected to the board since January, you know. I've seen people change their position in the last four months and come to a different conclusion because of certain things that have happened. Right. So I, I'm really looking forward to, to listening and, and learning from folks as, as I've been doing and, for a while now. And if Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't this the first time <clears throat> this kind of joint session has ever happened? Yes, yes. on this subject. Maybe. Thank you, Jason. Yes. I, yes. Think, I don't know if we've ever had, well, definitely on this subject, but I think these four jurisdictions on this topic, as far as my history goes back, which is about eight, nine years now, um, we've never had something like this as a public meeting. It's been small groups of people right. meeting. And I think this gives confidence to the electorate that, yes. hey, government really does work. Maybe. That's an argument to make for everybody coming together on this and actually doing something. Because if you don't, that's going to destroy the confidence. It's, it's that's going to be another room. unknown that's going to disrupt the community. There's enough people in the room, I think, that are motivated to get something done. Yeah, that's the I one thing so. I think I'm pretty confident of. Time is right. right. It's, it's not in your district now, it soon yeah. will be. That's right. Right. It impacts the entire yeah. county. So Roger, just to wrap up that discussion of the working session, um, really I think we've 
our approach, our plan is to, our, our hope and plan is to get everybody to come to some sort of consensus. Quite candidly, I think that we can see, it seems like everybody is at a point from my conversations, generally supportive of asking for Superfund if we don't have a, a more satisfactory resolution, satisfactory resolution of the state by some point in time. That exact point in time, I've heard very, several different views on that. And so that may be a, a good point uh, of well, you know, the, the, the problem with that is judge, consent judgment requires voluntary cooperation of the company. Right. And that's not going to happen. But I was in a conversation, part of calling the question here <laughs> as well, is I was in the conversation a couple years ago where uh, we essentially said, we'll give it a year and see where the lawsuit is. And it's been a couple of years. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so million dollars. the biggest thing I think that I think all of us could strive for is some sort of concrete, clear deadline. Yes. Um, whatever that may be, finding a number or a timeline that we can agree on is shorter the better. Um, the goal that yes. I'm going for, but that's that's the primary goal is some <clears throat> clear timeline right. that we can agree on. Now, is this going to be video? Yep. You yes, have CTN somebody? is going to be there. Yes, yeah, we're oh, CTN. Gonna, CTN. Be, okay, good. Live or Delayed. Live is what it, it says. Matter. I don't remember. Uh, the city's notice it says check your local listing kind of thing. So. Oh, okay. I just have one other uh, suggestion, and that is we posted that it's going to be public commentary at the beginning of the meeting. We could have 10 slots for people to sign up for public commentary and then have additional public commentary at the end, I think, without violating the open meeting. Prior to closed session, we could have if, a sign If we find out there are 50 people who want to speak. So our board rules uh, do not exactly. So our board rules don't list a, the city does a little differently than the county does. Yeah. Uh, we did limit it to three minutes. Normally you have five minutes during public comment or working session. Tomorrow night we're voting to amend our rules for this meeting to be three minutes. It'll be in uh, yeah. Otherwise yeah, you'll, be there, you'll be there till next yeah. week. Right. Um, I remember the first time I did five minutes in the county. <laughs> I thought this is just too much. It is. It is a lot. Uh, it's a lot. It's I mean, I'll fill it up, but it's a lot. <laughs> there is not consensus in three minutes. So I'm well five. Uh, it was shocking, really. <laughs> so that is our our hope is that that can limit it a little bit. Um, I will talk with Sue tomorrow and see if we can try and you know ask people to raise hands if they have a particular view. Uh, so we'll think through that tomorrow. So they're tomorrow. doing a setup with tables and mics, or we have to project, or whatever. Uh, there'll be a setup with tables and mics. Okay. Uh, CK will be recording it. I will find out if it's live or they're posting it after. Do you know if the, um, it's the same venue that the uh, tech on the edge? It's a different room. Main auditorium. It's a different room. So it's a different auditorium. So everything will be set up before that. While that event is so happening. their event is in a different building. It's in the I think <laughs> the large building, so it's in a different. Like room in that building. Okay. We're going to be good in the main signs. auditorium. They're going to be in a different room. Okay, good. Yeah, good signs. Yeah, we have some people helping out. We're directing people as well um, because they will have a lot of people. Their event ends at six. Ours starts at six thirty. Um, we'll have people there directing folks, but the room will still be set up. We won't have to wait for people like file out of that individual room good. to go back in. So our county staff walked through it and they felt confident that, I'm it, glad would to hear that. it would be okay. And there's not parking for both groups. I believe so. Yeah, church. Yeah, Jason, I would support you know having anybody who wants to talk be able to talk because um, you never know what's going to be happening. I mean, just raising hands. I mean, right now we got 500 hands that say you know they want super fun. That's not uh, as educational if we're trying to learn from people if they're able to talk and state why they think it's important for super fun or not for super fun. So I would, you know, go on the side of uh, trying to allow as many people talk as possible in public comment. Well, I, the last thing I'll say is I, we really wanted people to have the, you know, the electeds to have the chance to be on record saying, stating what their concerns are with one approach, even if they agree. So say somebody doesn't, isn't exactly on board with Superfund, they can express, here are my concerns with Superfund destination, mm -hmm. and state that in public to say, here are my concerns with these said, I will agree to this timeline or moving forward. Um, so that maybe it gives them some cover to, because there are legitimate concerns to it. Um, we all will disagree on what those are, but some people have different concerns. I really want people to be able to share those concerns, but also still try and move forward together um, in whatever approach they can feel comfortable with. So, but that would indicate there would be some sort of presentation from each jurisdiction. 
which is where I was before. <laughs> well, my thing is well, there one share that thought. So maybe so actually that's a good would you recommend uh, Mike that we maybe have somebody I see we don't have a unified you know, there isn't a unified message from each body. So exactly. you're, you're unique, uh, which is great. We love you, uh, but you're unique in your Why board. You you yeah. 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 yeah, I, I just want to know what the process, what's your expectation. Yeah. So I guess maybe the expectation from you, Mike, might be just sharing that you guys are unified. That this is where you are. You're at. Your board is at. Um, just stating that very easily. I think there'd be value yeah, in that. Do it short, so it doesn't take you much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, w I would hope that you would actually inform the rest of the participants what led you guys to your, your conclusion, because you've been out ahead of us, um, yeah. and you could certainly use a leader. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. short. Thirty-three years of <coughs> progress. How much more do you need? So, so Mike, actually, that would be great if you could share that. Yeah. Just sort of simply, I mean, you're you're easier because you are you guys are unified. Um, I don't know how unified SIO is um, on their approach. Uh, and not we are not entirely unified. <laughs> really? So I don't want to you know say have one one person speak from each jurisdiction. Um, yeah. I don't want to. Yeah. That's wrong. Right. Because as I said before, it makes it stilted, and you can't get diverse opinions expressed. Right. Which you didn't get the last meeting, so you need to hear a wide range of opinions. I think. So I'll take all this and think through this uh, tomorrow. We can chat. Uh, tomorrow. And there's only going to be eight, nine of us. I know at least two folks who were maybe traveling won't be there. Oh, so okay. that that cuts it down a little bit. Elizabeth yeah. and um, Zach. And I think there the the folks who've already been at the table on this issue discussing it will probably. Kind of lead that that conversation um, just naturally. Uh, I mean, I think I know certainly there are a few of our commissioners who don't have a strong position on it one way or the other, just because they're relying on those of us who have been really engaged in the issue to kind of give our recommendations to them on that. Um, so I think you'll, I think we'll have natural sort of keep people speaking. Um, so maybe from this, you know, I don't know what's. I don't know what the mayor might say from the city. I don't know if he's mm -hmm. going to say, I agree with everybody else, or if he will have a different view. Uh, it seems like Jack and Kathy and Jeff, it seems like you guys are pretty similar in your, your views on it at this point. Um, but that conversation will allow us to, to talk about that. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was, I mean, I'm happy to say something about it. Cool. Okay. I was I, I know this is hard to believe, but I, I would actually defer to whatever Jeff says, you know, <laughs> as, as being representative of my point of view. Hey, it's good going. Um, yeah. I've never heard Jeff say it. Um, <laughs> give me not to talk. Are there any other questions? This is giving me a lot to think through. I need a copy of that, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have uh, 10 minutes to do a 15 minute update. That's okay. We prioritize with less just so because there's other two other agenda items after that too. Bad. So. Too bad. We have, have to have a three hour meeting, I guess. Well, no, we have to end at eight, don't yes. we? Because cause Jenny needs to look right. at the building. And I need to stand up. So I took a look. Stand up. Excuse me. I took a look at the trend analysis and actually uh, coded it in. Google Earth to see how I mean there's a number of issues that I'm going to be submitting to Dan when he has a chance to review it. You haven't reviewed it yet. Right? Oh, we started our review. Yeah. That's what I was going to suggest, Roger. We that you, you know, that anybody that has looked at it and they have questions, yeah, I've comments, three or four pages of issues. Right. So I, I don't think like tonight. I think because of your agenda thing, I think that. Discussing them tonight. I'm just going to show one thing. You got a highlight for us. <laughs> so, this is their graph for NW76S, <clears throat> showing that it's going down over time. Now, NW76S is the one in the middle of the plume that might be feeding NW82S. 
it has really high concentration, not that's 82B, 82S, it has really high concentrations that might be heading towards, that is definitely heading towards West Park. And you got NW76S <laughs> just a little ways away, maybe not in the main line, but. So I was looking at this and I said, hmm, I don't think that's right. What it turned out, this is what it really looks like. How did you find the discrepancy? <coughs> I looked at, I scraped the data painstakingly off the PDF because we don't get real data. Yeah, you don't get an Excel sheet or anything easy. No, we don't, we don't, it's not easy to check the data. But they used the wrong well mm -hmm. for this graph. They, they called NW76S, but it's actually NW72S. Did you guys catch that yet? Well, we caught it with a little help. <laughs> I will tell you that Dr. Lemke okay. sent me his review, and he identified that same thing, Roger. Okay. So we had not got that that far yet, if you want to say. Right. So that's what I'm saying. Uh, please, yeah. you know, you have three pages. Uh, we're we're going to be reviewing. We're taking Dr. Lemke's and going to be checking his uh, five items uh, so yes um, you know we're aware of that right now I have uh, uh, you know that's now one of the, the question is a consultant did this yes the, uh, the consultant uh, did this the consultant didn't catch it they went to somebody at Paul who released it before sending it to you they didn't catch it it went to the DQ. You didn't have time to review it yet. Right. I, we got an April 20th. So it, it's a good thing that you sent it out to Larry and me. Well, and that's, we if you remember, you know, we it's have been chastised a little bit recently, specifically about this, about, hey, you released this. You guys haven't even looked at it. Right. Well, we also got chastised before when we didn't release stuff. That, uh, that's right. And that's so right. that's what we've been doing especially on, uh, from Gelman, if we ask right. for something. I get it, I try to get it out, uh, just like uh, I believe the December report. I'm not, I'm not saying that it's... So it's, it's we, we are planning but, to... But it's re some of the, the same process. old, same old, because it takes so long to review it. I know how, it took, how long it took me to catch this. Right. And it's partly because the form of the submittal is not conducive to checking the work. So I want you to take that in consideration. Right, and that's Dr. Lemke also identified uh, a, a form of what your comment is. So uh, again, he's he's done a preliminary review. Uh, we started our our review, you know, with the added benefit of having that. So Roger, if you have three pages, the quicker you can get me those, <coughs> that would be beneficial for our review. So uh, here's uh, here, I won't go into details, but the, the main last 40 uh, sample points. What? What did you say, Roger? I didn't. The, the last 40 sample points is, uh, they, they have four segments. The one that seemed to be most reliable is the last 40 sample points for each well. I don't know. That's the software. Yeah, they broke limitations. it off into, what, 2011, pre-2011? Right, right. I don't, I don't want to go into all the details yeah. of that like I was going to when I had more time. But here's, uh, the stars here are where they're, let me turn off the max on here so it doesn't give it away. Uh, Dan, could you share Loki's uh, comments with us? That would be good to have too. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can forward it to the group. Thank you. That way we don't have to no, that's fine. repeat. So he did only send it to me. So. That's good. I'm going to turn off the wells just so you see the stars here. In fact, I'm going to make the background lighter so it shows up better on this projector. So they've only they only sampled 49 of the 176 wells that are still have positive parts per billion. One of the questions is why did they only sample 49? If they seem to pick the ones that were on the peripheral. I will tell you that I told them to do the ones that are on the peripheral. Okay, good. They had a group that they had already started. Uh, I'm going to interject this. Uh, we had asked them some years ago, a couple years ago, Kevin Glund and myself, 
in talking with them, we said we wanted to start seeing trend analysis to make to be able to use that trend analysis to make some decisions, trigger trigger points in that. So they had they started their trend, they had a list. Well let's not go into details. But on this. we asked them to we wanted to know why they know, did a part of it. But we don't have time to go okay. through all the details. But, uh, we can put this on the agenda for next time. Okay, that's great. Uh, but what I wanted to point out was that the red, as I quoted in here, are the, the wells that are going up according to their trend analysis. Mm -hmm. And those pretty much match what the maximum per well that I've coded before. There's a few that they miss. Uh, so there's this northward movement, and it's confirmed by their trend analysis. One of the things they don't do, and I'll go, I'll, I'll set this in the, in the details too, is that they don't really care about the measure. It's just going up. But if it's going up at 100 parts per billion or 1,000 parts per billion, that should carry more weight than if it's going up at one part per billion. Anyway, so that's my take on the trend analysis, and we can cover that in more detail later. See if we got anything else that it just has to be covered this time. Um, by the way, um, the 103S that was a compliance well that was going up. So well, 103 okay, it's not a compliance well. Well, well whatever it's, you it's technically it. In the CJ, it, we, we made I know, it a, I know, a trigger. The yes, fact trigger. that it was treated as a compliance well, that it, that two months in a row at 85. Yes, we did that, yes. Yeah. Uh, this Glendale, trend analysis that confirms Glendale, that that is a problem well and should be investigated a little bit. This is at Glendale and Abbott. Right. Um, so table, let's see, same page, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, by the way, uh, well, I got you here, Dan. This is another yeah, item now. I'm off the trends. Uh, how did you correct the March database? Okay, I'm not quite sure what you mean. You know, the submittal of the complete database for March? Yeah. Uh, how did I cor correct? What do you... Well, there were, there were uh, missing IDs. Seven, there's about 300 and some records missing in the database. Now, it got corrected. For April. For April. I, I don't. So you don't know that there was a problem with March and somehow it magically corrected in April? No, I know what occurred in March uh, happened. Gelman, is, since they're doing at least a part, portion of that correction, mm -hmm. since they are doing the analysis of the uh, Allen Creek drain, uh, I know they send it, they send their data electronically uh, in their, in that monthly update. And what I've done is I've added, because I have my own data, I've added the spot and I didn't take out their, I didn't take out their data before I imported it. So it screwed things up for, and that was one of the problems with the uh, with the different discrepancies. So it's so really the, an access database. Problem. It's an access database, and then April enough. I corrected it myself and deleted theirs, the stuff they gave me for April. Okay, so you understood that there was an issue. Yes. With it, but yes. we didn't get a notice of that. I started to use that for the trend analysis. I said, wait a minute, something's wrong here. Yeah. And that's how I found out about it. But it would be nice if there was an issue like that to let Anybody I did not. The I did not. Oh. It came. The April came so quickly. I just did the new one. Right. And got people. Yeah, there's just a few days in there that I was yeah. messing up. Uh, we already talked about the Honey Creek mouth, and that's got solved. Uh, we already talked about the July June six meeting. Uh, oh, the Gelman or the DQ should resample the locations of all the wells correct the location errors that we know exist. You mean X, Y? X, Y, and Z, if you can do it. Um, apparently, that's doable. Dan has a machine that will do that. Well, you have a global positioning satellite. Right. Uh, it's a little handheld thing. It costs 100 bucks. You know, you go fishing on the but ocean. Who charges? Who charges? Yeah, you go fishing on the ocean, and you hit a couple right. of big schools of fish. You 
you want to mark where they are. So that's a quick way, Dan, if somebody has a GPS handheld unit to quickly. One, one of the companies coming and presenting the tech on the edge <coughs> has a complete system that, that does, while it's taking the data sample, it notes the X, Y, and Z, and then it puts all that information in and it's electronically compiled all the way through the reporting side. They'll be, uh, have a table at the event next door if you want to check it out. But that's an easy way to confirm a location. Yeah, because right now there's if there's some mistakes, to, and I think it's messing up some of the information. Uh, I'll talk about the half-life thing later, and the uh, the city Gelman to the, Gelman data to the city. We've already discussed that a little bit with Jeff. Uh, the new permit up that we've covered, and that's all I got. Roger, that was a record, record pace, Roger. <laughs> I tried to slow him down. But yeah, I know. It's, it's far as far as I can see. Can we move on to Dan quickly, Dan Bicknell? Yeah, yeah, Dan. Indoor air quality. Um, it's kind of important because we're going to be in those buildings. Do I want to get a show? Should we go or shouldn't we not go? Well, like we said, the information we can decide what risks you want to take. Um, but you know back in 2015 when the former Gelman plant was being uh, sold to the 242 Community Church and uh, modified into the Michigan Innovative Headquarters out there, they did some sampling and they found volatile organic compounds in the indoor air uh, that was published as we all know in the 2015 documentation of due care compliance which we discussed a couple of years ago. Um, but there were carcinogenic and non-carcinogenic volatile organic chemicals in the study. There was acetone, benzene, chloromethane, dichlorofluoromethane, ethanol, ethyl benzene, ethyl acetate, heptane, hexane, isopropyl alcohol, methylene chloride, methyl ethyl ketone, methyl isobutyl ketone, 1, 2, 4, trimethyl benzene, tetrabutyl alcohol, tetrachloroethylene, tetrahydrofurane, tiolene, trichlorofluoromethane, and xylene. Um, this is what they found in these buildings when they were vacant, after they had been cleaned for sale. Um, historically, Gelman had reported, uh, and it had been documented through sampling, that a large number of those solvents were used by them in the past. For example, acetone, benzene, isopropyl alcohol, methyl ethyl ketone, tetrahydrofuran, tiling, methyl benzene, methylene chloride, ethanol, and hexane. But remember that Gelman didn't report for some periods of time that it even used dioxane. So there's the possibility that there are additional chemicals that Gelman used that they never really reported. So the question is, as you know, Dan, have they been doing any indoor air sampling as part of their new air program since this 2015 study? I think you guys were working with them on doing some of that? Well, we had said that that is a due care responsibility from, for them. I had been working with Mark Smith more on the other building that he is, you know, had planned to do some additional air sampling. Uh, we had not, because of the concentrations of actual indoor air samples, and then because of our more recent uh, media-specific volatilization to indoor air action screening levels that were identified by our toxicology people. None of those, uh, none of the actual indoor air samples that from that building were, were anywhere close to the indoor air action uh, uh, screening levels, uh, that we call them riaz riazels, uh, which stands for, I'm not sure on an acronym, uh, recommended interim action screening level. There's both residential and non-residential. Uh, we have screening levels for the actual indoor air, soil, vapor underneath the slab, soil, shallow groundwater, and groundwater uh, riazel. Uh, we have not <coughs> asked them to, you know, have not asked them to do additional, uh, again, it, the numbers that we had got in the 2015, which were actual indoor air numbers, uh, were well below any of the screening levels that would trigger you know, uh, a concern for, for action. But that's, so, when you, that's when you have them individually. When you add them together, they get quite close to a 10 to the minus 6 carcinogenic risk. But you, what you do is you look at them individually, each individual. Right, compound. each individual. When, when you get 20 compounds together, 
they're geez, they're synergistic or additive, or they they they, they could be. Uh, I mean, like the synergistic. Well, I will but tell the you. The point is, the point is, please, is that you said they are not sampling, and they haven't sampled since then. Uh, I can't confirm if they have sampled since then. We haven't asked them. Like I said, it's their due care responsibility, and we can ask. But you will proceed their due care program as part of uh, 201. Well, this, we, this we know that you're, you're responsible. Due care is the responsibility of the owner. We can ask for that information if we have a concern. And uh, for example, on a lot of uh, a lot of the, a lot of the uh, uh, contaminants that you identify, you know, are volatile, and they do have. You know, our riot, we do have riasols identified for them, but uh, the concentrations that we saw on an actual indoor air sample were, were not anywhere near what those numbers would would uh, trigger as a screening level would trigger. That's hey, there's an immediate you look at them risk. individually, but if you add 20 together, uh, uh, then, it, then, I'm, then I'm it, Dan, let me finish. Please. Please. Really, you can help me with this, but if you have 20 together, well, I'm then, saying, then Dan, that a one time, um, um, okay, okay, you got 20. Let everyone finish their comments. I'm, uh, I'm going by what I'm getting the guidance from our toxicology people and how we, uh, how we handle vapor. They've been asked specifically about the, the, the data that Dan has talked about with the combination the of chemicals. Uh, the vapor intrusion. How we handle vapor intrusion is that they, you know, we handle them on an individual basis, and uh, that is the more that is the more um, immediate risk. And I'm getting that from our guidance people, so uh, I cannot answer whether they. I have not asked that specific question uh, whether that, but that's how we handle vapor intrusion. Uh, on any of the sites. Uh, can, we, you present, we, can you present this information to them and ask them to evaluate it, all the chemicals well, together? Mixtures are very complicated. You know, it's not necessarily additive. You, you, right. It's very and hard to predict and, and so that's, what's going to happen. Right, and that's why, they, that's why we go individual riasa, riasals. It's not it's, simply it's, so uh, You may have a point, Dan, it may be yeah. some, for some of these, maybe additive. Synergistic. It could be even more than that. It you know, potentiate. You don't know. It could be. You don't. And so, what we do as far as handling vapor intrusion is we do the individuals and 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 react to individual riasols. That's how things are regulated. You know, and that's what that's what that's the screening, how the laws are written. Right. The and so are you you. Uh, Change of bureaucracy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I would. I don't disagree. Yeah. With that. I mean, it so that's say what we have right, done here now. I I again, like I said, I will be. Uh, you know, you have asked the question again. Uh, what we have discussed based upon your question, Dan, your email, is whether we, uh, again, we would we can ask the church whether they have data. We have not. I will do that. And uh, again, it's it's the responsibility of the owner to have due care. But, it, but you oversee that. You oversee them. If you think that they're not doing a sufficient job of preparing a due care plan, that's your obligation to say, sorry, we looked at your due care plan, it's deficient. No, Dan, we don't we don't necessarily get a due care plan you on You can every, ask for it at any time. You can ask for it at any time. They that's can right. ask us to if we have an, if we have a reason to ask for it, if we have a concern. I would, like I said, we the, the numbers that we got with an actual air sample were nowhere near what we evaluate they are very near in a commu in a cumulative fashion. You should, I think, at a minimum, ask that follow-up work be done. Well, I'm, you know, you've got I will, a daycare I've center. Like you've got I a said, I will you've got a see if center additional. in the church, Dan. You got I a daycare center that, in the church. And those will, values are not representative of, of, of children. Those are representative of adults. You've got all kinds of complicated factors, and the fact that you won't ask them for more information when it's your job to oversee the public health is amazing to me. It's just amazing. This is, this is a toxic waste site, the largest in probably the state of Michigan for dioxin for sure, and you guys aren't even concerned about air quality and indoor air of a church and, a, and, and, a, and another building and an innovation center that's there. You've got all this data that shows at one point in time you have this proliferate of chemicals, but you're not willing to follow up and ask the uh, people to collect additional data. It's let just me ask amazing. That. Is there a trend here? Is that trend going up? Or you have no data. You have one point in 2015. 
one point in 2015. And their due care plan said that they're supposed to sample in 2016 and 17. But apparently they haven't. I don't know. No one's asked for the data. The DQ has not asked for the data. Concerns apparently. from the county or, the, or this, the township about the occupancy of these structures? Like, I mean, they went through this buildup and all this stuff, no one knew full well that. Again, they had this, they had these samples, which are actual indoor air samples. And again, the screening levels, which changed, which became more uh, in 2017, where we came up with these. Uh, uh, they tightened it a little bit. Right? They tight, you know, so but there was nowhere no near that. Concern so as we have handled other sites, the county issues the certificate of occupancy. Yes. SIO doesn't do that. Okay. Because of the special nature of the site. No, we don't do it at all. The oh, county. Building department. Oh, okay. The does all yeah. And, I, and I, I want to make a point clear. I'm not trying to pass a buck either. Although we have these uh, action screening levels, we don't regulate indoor air. Eagle, mm -hmm. it's the department DHHS that does that. Well, if this so was a super fun site, point. the super fun. So we look at what these screening the levels allow us to do to make sure is, is identify to them that hey, we have a concern. And then they do actual. Have they been notified of this? They have, uh, uh, yes, they know about uh, these. Uh, historically, they were identified. They had been in some of them back in 2015 or back in this early in 2015 16. They were in, you know, meetings. And again, uh, the. Uh, Sounds like they need to do well, more testing, clearly. What, what strikes me? So we, we focus. So yeah, all the focus has been on the 1,4 dioxane, but it's clearly an industrial site, and I think that, um, you know, without getting in all on the details of whether this chemical or that chemical is harmful, or whether it's a combination of the chemicals, I think there's a valid concern for why isn't the site being evaluated in a regular basis? In a as a broader contaminated site. Yeah. And it would be in, in line with the We're governor's just, first directive when yeah. she took office. Yeah. I, I think that that's, you know, I don't know if I'm too, being too bold to speak for, for Dan, but I think that's what's motivating it. It's just this frustration mm -hmm. that, that, you know, it's been, it's been like this, almost treated like, oh, all we have to do is worry about the one for a saying, but in fact, we don't are paying attention. Maybe right. there's more. And yeah, the attitude like, we've things. always done it this way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is yeah. reminds me of what happened in the early days. Mm. How this thing happened in the first place. Well, I, yeah, I think, you know, my opinion would be that they need to do more testing and see if there's any kind of trend going on, going up, going down. I mean, you've got a daycare. I think that's pretty significant. Yeah. You know, you got kids that are much more sensitive, especially infants and young. You know, they're watching. All the these parts are well taken. And this is yeah. part of my mantra for the last year or so. We have to, everybody, all the entities have to do the due diligence to match the scale of the problem. It's just not, like Rita said, it's not one chemical. For this right. site, there's a lot of stuff going on. And, and it, which is it was all of us to pay attention and to heed the governor's directive. Mm -hmm. What's the next step to get the appropriate agency doing the oversight? Well, as, as I've committed, we'll ask to see if additional sampling, you know, as was done, like they said in their DDCC, the doc documentation to do care, the, the report in 2015, they had said that they were going to do additional, I believe it wasn't two years worth, Dan, I think it was two additional events and uh, to get a seasonal variation. and. Uh, I'll yeah, replace that. Said 16 or 17. Did it? Okay. Yeah. Anyway, well, we're over right. time. Yeah. Um, additional yeah. items can wait until next time. So you can decide, Jeff, if you want to wear a mask or not. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I work with this junk all day. Okay. That, that explains a lot. Mates <laughs> <laughs> have really, mates with the shirts have really come a long way. It's uh, really amazing how much better it is now than it was even even 10 or 15 years right. ago or, or 25 years ago when I worked at the spray booth. I do want to touch on one of a couple of Vince's points. The Green Fair is June 10th, 
No, I think Friday. it's uh, Friday the uh, Friday. 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 Next 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 Friday. Week from Friday. First day of summer festival too. So we always need help at the Greenfield. And this year, we're going to need more help than ever. So I'd encourage any of you who want to come by and just help point people to information that we have. That we're just going to again have a SRSW card joint table. Uh, we will have. Thanks for signing up, Roger. We will have electricity, as usual. Uh, people want to bring an extra laptop so we can have two or three things going. All the better. So I, Reed and I talked about having a board. <coughs> yes, yes, EPA, no EPA. That and gets people. super fun. Yes, super fun. And hand out red stickers and green stickers. And, and people can post their opinion. Okay, you can do that, do that except that right? it violates the waste not program. <laughs> I'll give I'll them a marker. So, 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 so a marker would work better. Yeah, maybe, maybe you can have a split board and they can write somewhere. You can do one of those ink stamp like, like an ink yeah. stamp thing. They make those bingo ink stamps. Well, we have the we have the ink stamps for the kid uh, things. Yeah, just do that. That way, it's all the same. I'd like it to be so something that's vertical. Yeah. Because then choose, people walking by will see it. Yeah, it's interactive. Right. I also am trying to figure out a way to make giant cootie catchers, you know, the fortune tellers. Yeah. I haven't catcher. quite got it right. Cootie catchers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We ask some kind of question, you know, and they yeah. pick. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, how much, the one for yeah. dioxane do you think? Yeah. 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 Cleaned up or what, anything, anything. So, yeah. but I haven't yeah. really worked with that. I want to get your You know what this I know, but is that the answer? Well, you have to give some questions. I can figure that out. I got all excited about it on Saturday when I felt the need to do it. But anybody has any quick questions you might think of ways? You know, it's a little better than just the flaps, which is what you see in most hands on museums, where you ask a question and then you lift the lid to see the answer. But if we could somehow incorporate that into like the fortune teller. And then you'd make a, big, a couple big ones, and then the kids and the people. And the well, we can have Carnac here. Them. Them. Um, I have our Carnac cat, so. <laughs> right. I, I, I'm not sure I'll get that far, but the board is easy. How much do you charge? So you guys do like the board. Really you know? right. Visualized you as the wizard no. can. But they, they, you know, <laughs> The soothsayer is just an ordinary person who has a bit more information than the rest of us. Well, we wouldn't call it fortune teller. We just say, you oh, know, really? quiz. Oh. The guru. We give people something to do. All right. Uh, so who, who, can, who can come help out of the green today? It's not my. I think I'll stop. Dan, I know it. I think I'll stop. I think I'll stop. I mean, it's a great, it, for all you elected officials, it's a great way. They all show up. It's a great way to, uh, we take it. So, I'm, I'm embarrassed to ask, but when is the Green Fair? On that Friday night, the board When is the Green Fair? The green fair? Yeah. When the Mayor's the Green Fair. It's the Mayor's Green Fair. It's not my Green Fair. I always make the point of taking a couple pictures of elected officials who stop by. And then posted it on the SMSW website. <laughs> if it wasn't for you at the Mayor's Green Fair, I would have never been involved in any of this stuff. Sorry. Oh, wow. I saw you down there. Oh, I saw you down there. I was like, what are you blaming you? Okay, the next meeting is July 2nd. Thanks for coming. I'm going to go be hot, and I'll ask facility. Yeah, we're going to be hot. 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 Yeah, we're going to be hot.